Hi and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to be talking about the Canson Excel um, Aquarel Watercolor Sketchbook. Um, this one is A4 size, it is 300 GSM and I absolutely love the cover of it. So this has a lot of sheets. It has um, 30 sheets but it feels extremely heavy because it's 300 GSM paper and even though it's 30 sheets I think it looks like it's almost like 50. Um, so I love how this is. I um, have been using it. In fact, I did one um, online workshop with using this where I um, created these very beautiful roses and some um, leaves and I love the paper. You can see that, you know, this from here, you can see there's been so much of water usage that has been done. The paper is intact. It did not buckle. It's got a really nice texture to it. You can also hear the sound. This is the 300 GSM. It's pretty thick. It's quite nice that way. So I love this sketchbook and um, I wanted to just uh, do a little bit of artwork and show you how it is. So you, it will help you to understand if um, this sketchbook can serve your needs uh, for doing different kinds of artwork. So here um, it also has these perforations. So it, it is called as the uh, micro perforated. Um, so it helps you to like just tear it out and it's so close to your spiral over here so you know not a lot of paper gets wasted that way so i feel like creating some artwork from my studio and i want to just put it up um so i want to create a nice cute little bird um i'm thinking of creating like this horned bulbul there's this bird which comes outside our balcony every day so i think i'm just going to create a nice artwork of that here so time for us to create an artwork in this i love the texture of the paper and i'm going to use a fresh one to create a beautiful bird so i created a couple of versions of the horn bulbul um there's this very cute uh, fluffy version and there's a version which sings so i'm thinking of doing this singing version because um the bulbul keeps coming to our balcony and singing so let's draw it out add some details around it and we'll start painting so i'm just going to give like a very random border i just wanted to stick within this I don't want it to be too perfect. I'm doing it horizontal. Um, I think I should do it vertical because the bird will sit so much better in that case. So I'm going to just zoom out and you'll be able to see it much easier then. So let's create the bird singing over here. In this area, we'll have the branch coming here. And create lots of leaves and other things. I normally use a lot of uh, less lines, much, much lesser lines. Uh, but um, birds are not exactly my forte. I find them kind of hard to actually create. So that's why I'm going ahead and, you know, using a lot of um, lines. So I'm creating a cute fluffy version. We'll have lots of leaves. So I've got the bird over here, I've got some leaves. create a few more leaves around I, w I don't want to create flowers I think in this version I want to just have leaves let's see how the composition like works we'll use some gouache paints I think for this one so I'm just looking for my eraser so I can remove all the extra pencil marks and we can start painting. Lightening it down. Uh, I normally use a putty razor, but I haven't been able to find where I've left mine. I think um, I may have just misplaced it somewhere or put it in one of my different art bags. I carry a lot of art bags 
for various purposes it depends on like what kind of a bigger bag i'm carrying sometimes um i carry the art bag as it is sometimes i put a smaller kit inside a bigger bag like a handbag so in everything i've got like different <laughs> things that i've put up all right so with 300 gsm um you can try out gouache you can try out watercolors um both of them um are really nice to use in that hmm. so i'm going to use gouache today maybe you know we can use different versions of it wash down um like watercolors as well so i've got these um, ceramic palettes in which then this one is a plastic palette though um so in the ceramic palettes the paints stay fresh for like so much longer um so it's very easy for me to like reactivate and use the paints so we're going to try and do that now i'm going to grab a few more of my um gouache paints and we'll start painting this bird so i've got some brusher gouache here it's not the best but it's okay um to like do experimental work on your sketchbook so the horn um bulbul is basically it has brown and it has a patch of green red over here and a big patch of red over here so it's completely red and uh, brown so for the background i am thinking of giving um a light blue and then we'll have these green leaves so we'll go in the anaglogus uh, scheme and then for the bird we'll have it in um the red would like pop out so i'm going to just pick out a nice teal um and we'll add like lots of white with it and uh, create like a nice version for the background you can also go yellow um i just want to like experiment a little bit so this is the problem with bristro it just gets so difficult sometimes for me to open it so white is something that you will use a lot 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 in gosh so let's mix a generous amount of paint because we don't really want the background color to get over midway so with gosh um i would highly always recommend you to mix more paint and keep because um it doesn't really like even if it dries out you can always activate it by putting in water later so like these palettes of mine um the paints have been there for like a month right now or even more and i clean it out only when it like gets completely muddy and it's really not usable at all so only in that case i clean it out otherwise i don't really clean it out i have a lot of tiny tiny ceramic palettes and a lot of plastic palettes that i like to mix and use so um you don't really want your colors to get over midway so i like the color but i think it's a little too dark still so i am going to mix a lot more white oops don't do that it was a mistake um i'm going to just pick out a little more white and make the color even more lighter this is really small actually this area where i'm mixing i wish i had mixed in a slightly bigger palette because the amount of color that i'm mixing is a lot okay let's go ahead with this and hopefully it's good enough i'm going to go over the leaves because then it becomes easier for me to just fill in the background color and uh, we'll use good amount of thick paint to fill that in later i still feel it could be much lighter the background but let's see once it dries how it is you can use a um, flat brush also to fill in the details uh that is color up this entire background i'm just trying to like you know make sure that i 
use all the different brushes that I have. Sometimes I tend to like stick with one or two brushes and I don't use the rest of them. So what I'm doing is, of course, you have to find out what are your favorite brushes, what your hand um, sits in the best, because there are, uh, like at least for me, I feel like there are certain brushes which I love using, so I'll keep going back to them all the time. And then there are some that I just don't go back to because I think either it doesn't fit in so well or it's just so uncomfortable to use it. So you don't really need all the brushes in the world. Uh, I just like experimenting, so I keep trying out all the different things that I can get my hands on. And then I create videos of it so that, you know, you get an idea um, from that and understand if that brush will help you or that art supply will help you or not. So you don't really need to go and buy everything under the sun. Um, make sure that if you're new over here, you subscribe to my channel so that every time I put up a new video, you can uh, get a notification. So hit the bell icon as well uh, and keep watching all of the different videos and art tutorials that I put up because it will really help you to make sure that you don't end up um, wasting your money on uh, unnecessary art supplies which may not really cater to your art style. So I've got a nice background up over here. I think the color will look good uh, once it dries and once we add in all the details um, of the bird and stuff. So I'm going to let this background dry and we'll come back once it's dried and we'll add in the details for our bird. We'll start adding lots of different colors for our um, leaves. So I think we should go with greens and some blues as well for the leaves and maybe some yellow to add some highlight. Uh, or like you know a little bit of a pop of color and the actual pop will come from the dread so hopefully we end up creating something very beautiful my background is almost dry so i'm going to start painting um my bird over here so we'll start first with um adding mixing some reds some browns and we'll add details to this beautiful bird so i'm going to pick out a smaller palette because um, this is just so much happening <laughs> too many palettes on my table over here so i'm going to pick out some vermilion or some scarlet actually um, and for the brown we'll pick up burnt umber we'll mix some um, red with that also So I'm trying to now find the red scarlet. Yes, I found the scarlet. And we'll also take some um, yellow ochre. I think I'll use this mid yellow instead of the yellow ochre because I like that color a lot more. Hunting for that color now. We'll always take uh, we can always take like little more when we add the leaves so for the bird i think this much of color is enough so let's start painting so i'll start off with the yellow first and then um add in some brown and then finally the red So there's a lot of red that needs to be added over here. I've got some blob of water, so I wanted to remove that. And some little bit of yellow over here. I'm going to add some brown to this. It's really light you need a thicker consistency so let's make it a little thicker and 
it's raining beautifully over here in Bangalore and it's the weather is so perfect for painting. I love um, when it rains because it becomes all cold and of course it, it means that my paint is going to take much more longer to dry but I'm okay with that. Um, it's just much more nicer I feel to paint when it's um, colder the weather. The light change is because the power just went off but you can still see very clearly um, the painting so I'm not going to stop that. So I'm just adding basically blobs of colors. because that's where it's all these browns are there and we need to add some light darker brown also so I do have like a much darker version which is the burnt umber uh, this was the burnt sienna the earlier one so let's get some burnt umber also and add a little bit of that we also need some white because we need to merge it over here so I'm talking a little lesser while I'm painting. So if you're painting along with me, then you can just put on some music or you can just watch my process and then um, paint when you feel like. We'll get some darker burnt umber right now. I'm gonna add that also over here because then there's consistency in our color. Then it belongs to the same family. So while I'm painting, I'm constantly looking at my reference image. I have the reference image um, pulled out on my computer screen. Um, so I keep turning my head <laughs> to look at that while painting because I didn't keep it here in front of me. I should have ideally kept it here, but um, I didn't think it through. But this is also fine. It's such a beautiful bird. I just love when this bird comes and sits on our balcony. Um, it wakes us up every morning by singing and sometimes it comes in the afternoon, it sings. We have a bird feeder, but um, it comes and sits everywhere except at the bird feeder. It doesn't, <laughs> I don't know why it's like that. It's, it just never comes to the bird feeder. Time to add some red as well. I'm just going to merge a little bit of this. It's not necessary, but I feel like it'll look nicer if it's all merged. I'm going to add in some red now. So it's a much um, lighter red. It's not a bright red. It's more like, you know, a yellowish red. So I'm just going to pick out uh, maybe some orange of this red and we'll add some white also to it to make it slightly lighter this is way too light mixing some yellow with it right now it's still not a very nice red so i am not going to put that red yet I am going to add some um, maybe vermilion to it because I don't like how that red looks. Yeah, I think this is a much nicer red as compared to the scarlet. So in the brush pack, there is no um, red per se, which I really wish it did have because they give you like um, 24 colors. So you would expect that there would be a nice red. So 
so we'll add another layer once it dries so our wing needs to get a little longer here so I'm adding a slightly more darker um, burnt umber You can see it's slowly coming to life. I'm not making it realistic. I don't really enjoy making uh, realistic paintings so much. I realized that like a couple of years ago and um, like I have been thinking about it for a while right now. But um, I think last year I had gone to an art retreat and that's where I realized that I enjoy creating like cartoon versions of things or um, like a fun abstract version but not really um realism that's not something that i enjoy creating at all a lot of beautiful artists oops my beak looks so funny it's become very big so there are a lot of artists who create wonderful um, realistic paintings i am not one of them <laughs> i i can create a lot of realism that definitely i can do but uh, I think it's just a matter of choice. I don't enjoy it. So I've decided to like not create them so much. And just stick to like what I what gives me maximum joy. So my bird, um, these layers are so far done. I don't want to touch it too much. Let's create details right now for our um, branch and then we'll go about the leaves. So for the branch, I'm going to take some yellow ochre also, add it with our bronze. Meanwhile, while we add all those other details, our bird will dry and we can um, fill in the details of it and add some more layers or colors that we need to add. We'll have this wing sticking out. We'll get some white highlights. So with white highlights, I, I don't always mean, you know, directly applying white. Um, you, you can do that also, which like, you know, I can just add a little bit of white highlights here and there. Okay, so time to mix lots of greens. So let's move this palette. Let's get this one over here. Um, we'll mix lots of fun yellows, greens, blues, dark blues, and we'll create a lot of leaves around. So I've picked out a medium yellow. Now I'm going to pick out, uh, this is a leaf green. I think it's called as the yellow green. I'm taking like a lot of color because um, there are going to be lots of leaves over here. There's also viridian. We will apply a little bit of that and keep it too. I'm just looking out for more palettes. These are some clay palettes that I've made. Uh, these are all handmade palettes. I'm just going to show you more of the palettes while I mix the colors so you get an idea. I'm also grabbing some blues. We have a dirty purple. We can use that uh, also to mix. We need a lot of white. So let's add some more. Uh, there is white already in this palette, but then a lot of it is dried out, which is why we need like a good amount of white. And let's find some more greens. So I've got this sap green here. And I'm going to take some lemon yellow. I normally don't use lemon yellow for anything. So for mixing greens, I think it would be um, good. And then I've also got this olive green. I think I should also take a darker blue, like an ultramarine. I 
I love how the bird is um, looking so far. It's so bright and pretty and it's so fluffy. <laughs> the bird that comes here is also fluffy, um, which is why I wanted to make it like that. Like if you go online and see the pictures, they will not really be this fluffy, but the ones here are. So, all right, so let's mix a couple of greens right now. So I'm just going to move this painting aside. I'm gonna show you how I mix my colors and the different versions of colors that I'm going to make at this moment. Um, so I don't want to use any color as it is. So uh, let's mix a little bit of yellow with this. This is the mid yellow. And um, we'll also mix some white. So we'll get like a light version of this color, which I think looks quite nice. So I'm going to leave it creamy. I don't want this too liquidy because I'm going to add this on a layer of the background and that would get like very difficult to use if I um, have it very liquidy. I'm going to add a little bit of ultramarine to it because I think that this color is just too light. Like this is a much nicer green. So just add a little bit and that looks good. The next one, um, let's mix a couple of greens over here and um, create another color. I am going to check if I can find another palette to create a few more greens and keep them. So all of these handmade palettes are so useful for me. So with everything, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, white. It's also a very nice color. Let's add... Um, bit more of the viridian so this was viridian lemon yellow and some white let's create now with the blues um, I'm taking some sap green and I think this was cerulean blue a little bit of ultramarine and a lot of the lemon yellow we'll mix that first we'll see how the color looks and then we'll add some white it's not necessary to have so many different versions of green but because in this painting i don't have anything else i'm not going to add some flowers or um, any other auxiliaries i would say um, that's why I want to make sure that I have lots of versions of green. These two look very similar. So let's make it's a little different. I'm adding some olive. I think it needs a little bit of ultramarine. I don't know if you can hear the bulbul it's singing in the background right now. So ever since I moved in over here, I've been hearing it sing every single day and it's just so beautiful to hear it these are almost same let's see how it looks on um when we add it onto um, our paper get some white lemon yellow with the sap green which is also a very nice color so far we've got four colors. I think um, this should be okay. I want to create one last color with just mixing these two blues. And maybe whatever remaining lemon yellow is there. I want it to be more bluish than um, greenish. All right, so we've got a good set of um, colors right now. And let's start painting. So I'm going to start off with the darker shades. Um, actually, you can start off with anything. There's no rule as such. I'm just going to create a few leaves. This is size six that I'm using. I think I should sh shift to a four, but let's create a few and then maybe decide. I'm just like mixing around my colors. I'm not sticking with one green. I'm going to get the size 4 also. 
This is size six, but it is, um, yeah, I think it will be difficult. I'm just gonna pick out a smaller one, yeah. Let's create a few more leaves. And some here. This looks nice. Um, I'm going to now have like leaves coming out from everywhere else. Actually, even just this much looks really good, I feel. <laughs> um, like just till here, it looks pretty awesome. So even if I don't add anything anywhere else, it's still going to look pretty nice. Maybe we'll just vary the color of the leaves that we're adding. So it's not going to go waste your um, paints. You can always like use them in another um, painting because gosh can be easily activated by adding a little bit of water of course it's always very fresh when it comes out of the tube um, but it's okay if you can't use it all the time that way okay so this looks really nice um i don't really feel like adding leaves anywhere else um i think i'm not going to add that I am going to first add in details for the bird and then in the end decide if I really want to add um, more leaves. I'm going to add lighter leaf also as a layer on top here. Mm, doesn't look so good so let's just mix it up with this. This will require another layer um, to be added. So it looks like an interesting bouquet of leaves that have been like put together create one more tiny one next to this yeah I really like how neat and clean this looks. Um, so for our bird, we need to add some details. I'm going to just pick out a slightly smaller brush and um, we'll fix a little bit of things over here. Let's move all our greens away. It's time to add um, some little bit of black to our brown. to add uh, little details and we'll add the eye as well if you're not very comfortable then you can always use um, a pen to add in these details it's too dark so let's mix a little of it outside here i'm adding some texture with just some brush strokes. So if you have gone wrong with the beak, then don't worry, you can always paint over it with the background color, which is this dark blue. And uh, then you can, like this nice sky blue. And then you can always um, wait for it to dry and then paint over it. I fixed it by adding this white over here. I really like how it's coming out. It looks so beautiful. 
so i'm not going to let it stay in my sketchbook i'm definitely going to um, tear it out which is why i uh, wanted to create this particular painting in um, this book which has the perforations because i can remove the sheet off and i can just frame and put it in my studio If there's some background noise, please ignore that. We're cooking something at home, something delicious, I'm assuming. So all these lines, I'm just looking at um, the image that I have with me on my screen of this bird. I'm not trying to replicate it as it is, I'm just going to do like one version of it in my own style. So. it looks amazing so happy with how it's coming out i feel like the bird is in front of me right now the eye is what i need to do I need to be a little careful about that so let's take some black and add for the eye Um, some more final details. I like how it's coming out so far. I think I will leave it like this. I was thinking of adding some details with color pencils, but I like these details that I've added with uh, my brush itself. So I'm not really going to add um, any more details. I like these textures. I like all of these um, details that have come out quite nicely. Okay, and I think a little darker brown over here will look nicer. When I'm adding details, I go very quiet. Um, my concentration is on this. Uh, I like the brush to just dictate my flow. I don't really, um, I don't dominate the brush. I let the brush sort of dominate me. So that's why I, I really have to be super careful about the kind of brushes I use. Um, I, I would recommend that to you also, you know, make sure that your brush is really are good they are sharp they spawn, they're really nice uh, in in terms of like their quality because if your brush is not very good then it becomes very difficult for you to create nice artwork with it this is for the branch Now we'll add some details for our um, leaves. Um, I like the eye um, and in the end I will add like a small dot of white inside it. Not right now, I think it doesn't require. This is so much happening in the background today. I'm not sure if you can hear this like a helicopter flying. Okay, so now for our um, leaves, we can use darker and lighter lines of all the colors to be added inside. It became so thick. So I made this, but it looks really bad. So I'm just going to add in the lighter color again on top of this and I'll wait for that to dry and then add the veins because it looks really funny.
in fact i think i'm just going to beat it out and then add the details for the leaves it looks very cute so far it has now completely dried and uh, my eyes of the bird look a little funny so i want to make it fully black and then i will add um, a little dot of white i think towards the end so let's just cover this whole thing up yeah and then we'll wait for some time and then we'll add the details for that meanwhile we'll add the details for our leaves which have completely dried um, so i'm going to just you can see how it's like still wet So, oops, I think I took too much of water in my brush. Okay. For the smaller ones, I think I'm just going to leave it like this. The bigger ones will be adding details. Oops, I didn't add show the full thing. Okay, so now um, let's add for the rest. This is also a good way to find out if it's seen or not. For the dark one, we'll add in lighter color. I like how these bunch of leaves have come out. For the last one, this is I think too light. Just make it a little darker. I guess that's okay yeah so now the only thing that is left to do is the eyes and then i will show you how the whole thing looks together um i really like it i'm super happy with how it is just going to use a different brush so that there's absolutely no residue of anything left over there pick up some fresh white That looks very nice so i'm just going to now zoom out and show you how the whole painting looks i'm very happy with actually how it looks i know there's not much that i've done in the background but um i kind of like it the way it is maybe i will let it sit like this for a while and then if i feel after that that it still looks a little dull then maybe i'll add in some more details but so far i really like it so here's a much more like comprehensive version of the whole thing i really like how it has come out and i can't wait to put it up in my studio and um you saw how many layers i did and the paper has like held up so well it's amazing i'm so happy that i got this book um so if you are looking to get like a nice um spiral book with perforated sheets then i would highly recommend you to get this um cancer excel sketchbook i will find out where i got it from because i got this really long back and i will leave a link in the description box below um along with the price right now i have no idea how much i got this for but i think it should be anywhere within thousand is what i am assuming it is uh, so this is 30 sheets and uh, 300 gsm it's brilliant um i'm very happy with it i hope today's video was helpful for you also to understand if this will suit your needs and i will see you soon for the next one bye bye